for the most part, we have a, a low time preference as Bitcoiners. But the speed at which this is happening right now matters. Like whether whether Bitcoin wins in in five years or twenty five years is makes a big difference. I think. I think one of our advantages is that they underestimate us. Yeah, and they won't forever. We wouldn't be here without that. No, like this this doesn't exist. Like we have to use it. We have to live it. Which is what I was saying. Like we can't. Yeah. We can't just think of the theory. We have to we have to live the theory, right? If you think this is this is the future you want to live in, make it the present that you do live in. Yeah, this is Bitcoin is our best hope to build something better. We are live here from Bitcoin Beach, and I'm thrilled to have my good friend, uh, John Dennehy, with us today. Uh, John is the founder of My First Bitcoin, or Mi Primero Bitcoin, and I think most people who will be listening to this podcast will have at least heard of what they're doing. They've, they've had a huge impact on uh, just bringing uh, Bitcoin education to the masses here in El Salvador with a big push on people on the school age category. So. I'll turn it over to John to, to tell us how that started, what brought him here to El Salvador. Um, yeah, where, where he sees it going from here. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for having me and um, really happy to be here. So actually, I, I think that the origins of Mi Premier Bitcoin, could a lot of credit could go to Bitcoin Beach, right? Because I don't think I would be in El Salvador right now if Bitcoin Beach if that project never began, then maybe there's not legal tender here in El Salvador, and then there's not a need for a, you know, a Bitcoin education NGO to, to be here. Um, so I'm from New York originally, and I was there when the pandemic started, which was a very, very strange time. I mean, I, I know it was a strange time everywhere in the world, but it was, it was just wild in New York. Um, and I, don't mean that positively. Uh, so that that was a time where I did a lot of reflecting, a lot of a lot of deep thought. Uh, I took a lot of long walks by myself. Were, you were allowed just, to uh, to go out and walk, or were yeah, you so breaking I, the rules then? Or so, was it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I was actually out on Long Island. So it's a yeah. there's a bit more space out there than than New York City proper. Um, so so yeah, I I went on a lot of long walks and just pondered the state of the world and and it seemed very clear that something was broken with the world and and I think we could probably disagree on the specific details of of what's broken but I think it's clear that the path that we're on is unsustainable and it's never been more clear than during the pandemic uh, so I was interested in Bitcoin for for a while before that and I I had thought of Bitcoin as as a really potentially positive influence on the future of the world. Um, but it it was it was only when the pandemic happened that that I thought about it with more urgency. Like things things need to change. Like would you have described yourself as a Bitcoiner prior to that or or just you were interested in Bitcoin but it wasn't like a description you'd use to describe yourself. Oh no! I, I would definitely describe myself as a as a Bitcoiner. Okay. Um, I, I I was I was very excited about the prospects of Bitcoin, but I, um, again, I, I I just don't think I saw the urgency that I see now. Uh, with with you know we gotta we have to act. We have to do something. Uh, so so yeah, education just made sense to me as a way to make an impact because. I believe that education is the foundation of everything else. So, you know, there's there's all sorts of adoption for for Bitcoin, right? Like businesses have to accept it, people have to use it, people have to transact in it, save with it. Like there's there's a lot of different parts to the puzzle. 
But education, I think, touches all of them. Education helps all of them. And, and that's, I think that's important for, for people to start with that, with that base, with that foundation. Uh, so, you know, I thought Bitcoin education would be good. And I, I also thought, so I spent a lot of time, a lot of my adult life in Ecuador, in South America. So those are kind of my two touchstones, Ecuador and New York. And I knew plenty of people in New York that had Bitcoin. None of them used it, but plenty that had it. And in, in Ecuador, I didn't know anyone. And Ecuador actually could really use Bitcoin. I, I, I would love if, if that was one of the next countries to, to really get some traction there. Um, and it seemed, it seemed like there was a, a disconnect between the places where people had Bitcoin and the places where people needed Bitcoin. And El Salvador fits into that into that latter category as well. Uh, so I was I, I spent the latter part of the pandemic in Ecuador, um, continuing to think about Bitcoin and education and how Bitcoin might might have positive impact and, on and the future what, world. Were you working in any type of Bitcoin things in Ecuador, or what were you doing there? No. So I went to Ecuador because. Um, I was working from home, so I I did some consultant work, some some editorial consultant work, and before me from our Bitcoin, I I was a journalist. So I was I covered they had elections there. I covered the elections and just like a few things that were going on there, um, but it was all it was all what I'll say remote work. Like there was no office that I had to go to, so why not do it from the Andes? Is what I thought. Um, so yeah, it was so I I helped. I found someone that wanted to teach their community. They were actually in Colombia. So I gave them a few sets and they, you know, they taught their, their neighbors and that was it. But then after the Bitcoin law was passed, then I wondered if, if there could be a grassroots Bitcoin education effort in El Salvador, one, if that would be necessary and two, if that would get any traction, like I, I didn't know these were open questions, but it, it, um, I thought they were questions worth finding the answers to. So, so I came here. I actually came to to Bitcoin Beach. That was that was uh, the the first stop that I made when I when I came to El Salvador in August of last year. I spent a week here and just. So that was between when the the law was announced and actually enacted. That was kind of in that that Correct. interim three yeah. months. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to make sure to get here before the law was enacted. Not nothing to do with me from our Bitcoin and more more personal reasons. I'm really interested in change. So I, I wanted to kind of have a snapshot in my head of what things were like before Bitcoin was legal tender and and after. Um, so yeah, I came I came a, a few weeks before it went into effect. Awesome. And what has like your your views coming in and the importance of Bitcoin education versus now where you stand? Have your views changed at all on, on what we should be doing, how important that is? Uh, only reason I ask is because I, I wrestle with that. You know, sometimes I think, man, we just need to be doing so much more education because there's really such limited knowledge, even amongst people that are using Bitcoin. And other times I'm like, no, this should just happen naturally, like the internet, like people just started using it and going along and most of them have no idea how it works, but they make it work for them. And so where do you fall on those two camps? Um, yeah, I think, I think since, since coming here and having this, this like deeper experience with Bitcoin education, I think it's more valuable than I would have thought before. Like I, I thought that it was valuable before, but, uh, you know, to see, to see the impact that it has. Like we have people that that work within the organization, Me from our Bitcoin, or just students that we've had. Um, and to to see this real world impact for me just, I don't know, just makes it tangible and real. And also I think, so I see, I don't think that it is predetermined that Bitcoin, I, I think it is predetermined that Bitcoin will win. I think it's not predetermined how it wins. And I think how it wins is really important. And I think education can play a really big role in that. So if 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 we don't take the initiative, then I think there's a danger that, um, you know, if we could talk about centralization and decentralization, there's 
I, I don't want to I don't want to pick on any particular exchange or company or whatever, but like these large interests, whether they're Bitcoin companies or, or other companies that aren't Bitcoin that are, you know, invest in Bitcoin, they have some they have some skin in the game. They they want it to go one way or the other. Uh, I think there's a danger that they dominate. Right. And then the the introduction that people have to Bitcoin is biased. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm an idealist and, and I know that that there's there's trade offs and there's compromises. And that's how that's it's necessary to move forward. But I, I, I really think that Bitcoin education has to be the exception of that. Like it has to be pure. It has to be impartial and we can't let other interests invade that. And I think there's a danger that someone else will do it, um, but it will be they they might have other motives than than what than what we have. And and so our motive and, and we might have other motives than than other Bitcoiners, right? Yeah. Like so so I, I think Bitcoin is is allows us to to shape it a little bit right like i think we are set in precedence right now and here like here in el salvador that's why el salvador is so important because we are set in precedence and and if they're positive precedents that i'm really hopeful for the future of the world if they're negative precedents then i'm a lot less hopeful no, I, I think a lot of people, um, that's why they're so interested in El Salvador, even a lot of companies, because, you know, they'll, they'll be up front and say, we're, we're never going to make any money in El Salvador. It's, it's a fairly small country with a fairly small economy. But if it works here, it will go out from here to the rest of the world. And if it fails here, then it's really going to set it back. And so there's a lot of, um, Countries may or companies that are maybe it's out of self interest, but it's it's also more just for the country to succeed. They view that in their long term self interest as a Bitcoin company that El Salvador succeeds in this project, even if they don't really have specific plans for El Salvador. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's what that El Salvador is such an interesting place right now. Um, you know, I'm sure it's 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 always interesting. You've you've been here. For, for quite a long time and and I'm I'm sure I'm sure you weren't bored here that's not why you stayed um but just because of what you're saying like this is this is really a country that's punching above its weight now right like I think there's a realization among many people that what matters here is important to the future of the world and that is that's really exciting that that to to be able to to participate in that and and live here and 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 see it every day is is um you know there's <laughs> I don't mean to to be too like too Chloe about El Salvador right no place is perfect but uh you know I'm 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 very happy to be here there, there's an excitement in the air that's really palpable it's like yeah. people people can feel it and I think that's why we're seeing people from around the world moving here i mean a lot of them sight unseen they've never even visited yeah. and they sell everything and right. you know figure out how to get their dog here <laughs> and this is home for them so they've kind of you know burn the burn the boats burn the bridges and and this is where they're going to make their stand and and that's exciting exciting to be in a place where people are that thrilled about being there and that hopeful for the future yeah exactly hopeful like i don't that's what I feel here in El Salvador is is the majority of people here believe that tomorrow tomorrow will be better than today. And that might not sound like a big deal, but I think it's a huge deal like that. That makes a big difference in everyday life. And and in the world that we live in today, 2023, that is somewhat rare. I don't think there's a lot of countries that are like, oh, yeah, we're going to we're going to be in a great position a decade from now. I think a lot of people are like, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think for me, that contrast that contrast is um, 
probably even more in your face than it is for people who have been here for a shorter amount of time because historically El Salvador has been a place people wanted to leave. I mean, right. ever since I've been here, anybody you talk to is like, what is your goal? Well, to somehow make it to the US yeah. and work in a dead end job somewhere and usually to go illegally. And so for to see all of a sudden them excited about El Salvador and like, no, I have a Salvadoran passport like this. I mean, it's it's really like breathtaking. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I mean, literally three years ago, it was the exact opposite. And so I think people underestimate how much just people having hope impacts the development of a country and the forward trajectory. So I think that people are underestimating the importance of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, because so, so I think... I think you know it's something that that you and I have in common, and and so many of the people that that have come here have in common is that we want to make an impact in the world, like we want to change the world, and that's a big task. But it really, like when you break it down, it it starts with the individual, right? Like it's it's that there's that uh, phrase. I don't know. If phrase is the right way to name this, but um, you know there was a man who wanted to change the world, but that seemed too big. So he's like, okay, I'm going to change my country. Went to change his country. Okay, that seems too big. Okay, I'm going to change my city. Mm, that seemed too big. Okay, I'm going to change my neighborhood. That seemed too big. Okay, let me let me change my family. That seemed too big. Okay, let me let me change myself. And then so that person, they he he changed himself, which changed his family which changed his neighborhood, which changed his city, which changed his country, which, which changed the world. And, and I think, you know, it, it's, it seems like such a big task, but changing the world as a, is as, as simple as changing yourself. And, and I think that's true for everyone. And that's something that, you know, uh, I think people understand here, like there's, people strive for the future here. I, I agree. I do think that to just to push back on that uh, a little bit, I do think that that has been supercharged by the fact that there's a government who holds that same point of view. And I've never been somebody who puts much faith in, in government, but I've seen just to have a, a president come in place that is pushing these things forward has allowed people to hope. That's that change still has to come grassroots bottom up. I'm still a big believer in that and not top down, but it it is super helpful to have a government that's on the same page. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Like uh, having again without without Bitcoin Beach, I don't think I would be here right now. And also without you know the government support of Bitcoin, I also wouldn't. So so. And maybe that's a good example of how these two things could be married, right? Like I came here and Meet Premier Bitcoin began because of two things. One, because of this bottom up grassroots thing that, that Bitcoin Beach represents. And, and also because of a, a more top down thing like that the, the, the president yeah. of, of this country wants this to happen. So that that means that um, there's this tactic permission to innovate with Bitcoin here, which doesn't really exist anywhere else. No, and you see a lot of people even in the Bitcoin space, they want to focus on one or the other. Like, oh, it shouldn't be coming from the government. It should be coming grassroots up. Or no, the government's the one that's going to push all this. And, and really, it is coming from both directions. And I yeah. think that's why it has happened so fast and so successfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, again, I think El Salvador is just, write in a new playbook um this this is not what i so i i got into bitcoin about 10 years ago at this point and i never would have thought that <laughs> that this is how things would have evolved right um but that that's i i, I see it as as details right like as bitcoiners we we want to look further into the future and further into the future, we want there to be Bitcoin adoption, right? Like we want we want to live in a Bitcoin world and, and however we get there is is uh is a good thing, you know, whether it's whether it's 
top down, bottom up, a mix. I mean, bottom up always has to be there. Yeah, yeah, that, for sure. That, that's a component that uh, I think the top down maybe. I don't know. It's too early to tell, but I, I think it would be really interesting to compare a place like El Salvador that has this mix to another place that is solely bottom up and and to see what the differences are between the two. I would think the difference would be speed would be one. It would happen faster in a place that has both like El Salvador. Um, but then there might be other benefits to to the the only bottom up approach but you know we're still we're still so early that um i i haven't i haven't made any uh final conclusions about that were you aware of what was happening in el salvador prior to the announcement of the the law or was that your first exposure that there was anything happening with bitcoin in el salvador i was not aware and and that's and so Latin America, it, as a journalist, Latin America was my beat, but also like I, I've spent a good chunk of my adult life in Latin America. Like I, I, I really like this region. Um, and I also have spent a good chunk of my adult life being obsessed with Bitcoin. So I'm almost surprised that I, that I didn't know, like I almost didn't believe it when I first heard it. I was like, wait, what? El Salvador is adopting Bitcoin? <laughs> I got to look into this. <laughs> yeah, and I think that goes to why it isn't, you know, it, it is helpful to have a favorable government mm -hmm. that is wanting to to push it. I think had not that happened, we would have a much smaller footprint here. There'd be much less Bitcoin circulating and the, the Bitcoin circular economy would would be in much earlier stages still. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 speed. Yeah. And and I think. Um, uh, I thought I mentioned this to you, but I think it was a different conversation. But uh, for the most part, we have a a low time preference as Bitcoiners. Uh, but the speed at which this is happening right now matters. Like whether whether Bitcoin wins in in five years or twenty five years is makes a big difference. I think. Um, you know, that's that's more time for what I'll call hostile actors. And what I mean by that are, are you know, people that want to divert Bitcoin from from its from its origins, that they want to make it uh, to serve other purposes, to 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 centralize it. I, I, I really what what excites me about Bitcoin is it's is its potential to empower individuals. Um, and that is not going to be attractive to people that control individuals now, right? So I think the longer we take to get to the world that we're going to, the more danger there is that these quite powerful interests start to push and pull things. I think we're, I think one of our advantages is that they underestimate us. Yeah. And they won't forever. No, I mean, I think El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as legal tender caught almost everybody off guard, yeah. including world leaders. I mean, I had people from the U.S. Embassy show up here a couple of weeks later, you know, wanting to talk about what is going on and how this impacts what they're doing. And, you know, right. it was they came at it very suspiciously because yeah. this could challenge the U.S. dollar and the status quo. And right. so it was uh, it was. It was funny, these people that would otherwise have no interest in what we were doing here all of a sudden are very interested in what's going on at Bitcoin Beach. So no, it was it was it was quite quite a bold move by the government, you know, like I, and I think it's obvious, but just to like quite positively bold. Yeah. Right. Like um, and they've stuck to it, too. To their credit, they've stuck to it. You know, they, they haven't. Uh, it doesn't seem like they've wavered from that position at all. Like, which no, this is which would have doing. been very easy to do in a down market. I mean, there's a lot of companies that have wavered that were all in on Bitcoin a year ago and now are making announcements that they're leaving the space. So right. to see a government kind of commit and and double double up on what they're doing, double down on it is has been really encouraging because that was my fear is 
oh, they're going to get cold feet and, yeah. you know, they're going to get all this negative press. But it's almost like the negative press has made them more resolute about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just going to be, <laughs> you know, we we all we all know that uh, Bitcoin will win in, in the long term. So when that happens, El Salvador is going to be in a very good position. Yeah, no, it's going to be quite breathtaking. I mean, that's what I keep telling people is don't be in a hurry for the Bitcoin winter to be over because we've got a lot of ground to prepare because when it has this next run up and you have a country where everybody has Bitcoin wallets, I mean, it's going to be insane. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, which, which you know, I, again, with the speed, I, I think it's important that we create here in El Salvador. Um, and one of one of the objectives that we have at, at Me From Our Bitcoin is to create that base within the population, that that foundation within the population, so that when when things do come fast, because they will come fast, like things will turn and and things will start to happen very quickly, uh, that that they're prepared for it. Uh, not not everyone will be prepared, but at least there's there will be this this core. And you know they'll reach out, so they'll be they'll touch their neighbors and their friends and their coworkers. But there needs to be a decent sized core that exists within El Salvador to 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 make sure to be a check to make sure that um, you know people don't fall victim to scams that that uh, you know the path isn't diverted from. Yeah, one hundred percent. Can can you share a little bit more in depth about what type of educational initiatives you guys are doing? I know you have the Bitcoin diploma program in the schools. I know you also do um, kind of shorter class sessions that are open to the public. So how are you guys kind of structured right now? And then, then maybe we can talk about the project we're working together uh, with Bitcoin Island yeah. um, and, and how we're working together on that island to make it the first kind of you know, isolated uh, yeah. economy where Bitcoin is circulating and is the primary driver of things. Yeah, literally an island, not like bigger. Yes, yeah. literally an island. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do a few different things. So we, we're we focused on getting people off of zero. So we're not, we do have, occasionally we do have some more advanced classes, some some workshops, but that that that's that is not our main thing that that's a minor a small minority of all the classes that we have so for the most part we're focused on on salvadorians who are brand new to bitcoin who don't know anything about bitcoin oftentimes have never used it um oftentimes are maybe a little bit skeptical about it curious right they wouldn't take the course unless they were curious unless they're a student at one of the schools where they have to take it but but uh the profile is is a little skeptical, but also a little bit curious. And and what like what age group would that be? Would that be older people, younger people? So so there's a range. So with the we've taught most of the Bitcoin diploma to to teenagers, but we've also taught it like on the island. Um, it might make sense for me to just like start at the beginning. So yeah. we we uh, we began just with an intro class. So like a one off, a 90 minute um, intro. What is what is Bitcoin? Why is Bitcoin? Download a wallet. We'll send you a little bit so you could see and how you just easy it is. Made a posting online that, hey, we're doing this class or how did people know about it? How did that? So in the beginning, so the the yeah, um, this was it, it's, it's interesting how things work because so I, I was in Ecuador and then I was in the US kind of pondering this and talking about it with friends and then but everything changes once you're on the ground right then <laughs> then <laughs> um so what's, how how is it like Mike Tyson says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face yeah yeah something like that uh, so the way that the very first classes started was we so so we pay the teachers we pay them in bitcoin um and the very first classes was the teachers were paid per student. So, you know, a number of Salvadorians that I met in my first weeks here that were interested in Bitcoin that became early teachers. 
it was their job to to fill the seats, right? Because they were paid. If if two students came, then then they didn't get paid as much as if eight students came. So so uh, the very first classes were just people's friends, families, neighbors, um, coworkers. And and then as we evolved, you guys are kind of like the Amway of uh, you know Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Get your family and friends in on the ground level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and they get a little bit of Bitcoin too. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but then we we started to have regular classes. We didn't have a space in the beginning, so it was just uh, you know we had classes in La Casa de Bitcoin. Um, we had classes just in like cafes that would lend us space, and then it would be like every every Tuesday at 6 p.m. we have a class here. And then, you know, we also got uh, uh, Twitter and some social media so we could advertise a little bit. Um, so yeah, that, that's how we started with these just one-off intro classes. And we still do that. And in fact, that's still the majority of our students just take these intro classes. Uh, but we also have a Bitcoin diploma, which I don't know, I think it's in the, in the shop there. Um, which is a 10 week course, which was developed. I, I, I got to pull this up here for, for Andy to show, show the people. I mean, this is, it's, how many pages do we got here? Yeah. The, there's no page numbers on it. Cause I think, I think it's too thick. That would dissuade people, but I mean, it's a good, probably hundred page book yeah. that um, book goes really in, in depth. Yeah. I was very impressed with, with what you guys put out with that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so so this is a 10 week course and it goes a lot more in depth. So actually I'll bring that back and just use for reference the table of contents here to to uh, help talk me through it. But, um, you know, it starts out because it's 10 weeks, we have we have a little bit more time. So it starts out with just what is money? It, we don't even talk about Bitcoin until class four until the fourth week. Um, so just setting up like, what is money? Why is money centralized? What, what's the history of money? Why is money? Um, and then, you know, it, it, because of the time we're able to go a little bit more in depth and we actually, at the end of the course, then we give them a, a little test to make sure that they learn sufficient material and, and then we give them a, a diploma. So we graduate them and, and that's great that that's gotten a lot of attention. So we started teaching that in the public school system. Um, not too far from San Salvador, kind of in the suburbs of San Salvador. And we have tried, we went through three groups last year. So the first group was just at one school. The second group, we had it in two schools. The second one being in Itaco. Uh, the third group, we had it in three schools, but also the island and also two city halls. So in, in six locations total then. Um, and what we like to do with that is we combine it with our intro class too so we might offer it to if it's in a school if it's in a public school then teachers and parents might be a little bit skeptical uh so we try to assuage that fear by offering the intro class you know once a week just for the community anybody could come um, so if the parents are concerned they can show up for that and get a yeah you know get an overview of what their kids are learning yeah yeah exactly exactly um, and then we also, we have meetups and I see the meetups as, as an educational tool as well, because the way that we run our meetups is we give a, we, we have it at a new place every time is somewhere in greater San Salvador. And we give everyone that comes a few sats, uh, and we also make sure that the place that we have it at, they accept Bitcoin and we negotiate a discount with the place. So we give people some sats when they come and we give them a reason to spend it. And again, we're, we're targeting, you know, a, a wide variety of people come. So there's plenty of people that they come every week and they're, you know, they've, they're hardcore Bitcoiners and they don't need any education. They just want to hang out and that's great. Um, but when we give the Bitcoin to people, then we ask them if they have questions, if if they so we go table to table and and it's like, hey, have you gotten your bonus? Uh, do you have a wallet? I mean, if they don't have a wallet, then that's that's a step one. Right. Yeah. So 
here's a wallet that you could download and, and they make their first transaction. Sometimes it's quite quick, but sometimes somebody from, from the project will sit at that table for 40 minutes or an hour, just going over everything, answering their questions. Um, we try to kind of combine people at the meetups that know more and people that know less. Uh, but, but to me, that's a sort of very relaxed class. Like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to, but it's, uh, I, I see that as, as another type of education that we do. So I guess those are the three main types. Again, we also have some more advanced classes, but that's, that, that, that's not the main thing. Um, so the intro classes, the Bitcoin diploma, some advanced classes and the Bitcoin meetups are, are the four avenues that, that we use to attack education here. And are there certain wallets that you have found work best for newcomers or do you recommend anything specifically or how do you handle that aspect of it? Yeah. So we, we try to stay away from using only one wallet because again, we want to maintain that impartiality, not just in, not just in deed, but also in, in appearance. Yeah. Um, so but there are some that are better for, for beginners and others. So Bitcoin Beach Wallet, uh, Wallet of Satoshi and Moon Wallet are probably the th three that we use most often with people brand new to it because they're, they're pretty user friendly and, and they're not, they don't require KYC, which yeah. is important for, for someone, you know, to that, that, that really helps with a aha moment that they could download it and literally a minute later have Bitcoin there. Like, you know, if you have to go through KYC, then that. Yeah, it, it kind of takes the magic out <laughs> yeah. of it. It's yeah. like, and then it doesn't go through and they can't read your picture and you're like, right. And they're yeah. like, oh, I'll just <laughs> like, stick I with cash. This seems this very was, complicated. Is this supposed to be easier? Cause yeah. I mean, we found, you know, obviously I'm, I'm biased to the Bitcoin beach wallet cause that's what we use here in the community. And, and it's, you know, has the map function, a lot of stuff, but, but even that, um, it has an extra step because you have a phone number verification just because we want people to be able to, you know, be able to reclaim their account if they yeah. were well, the Satoshi sometimes I'll, if it's something quick and we don't have a lot of time, I'll tell them just download well, of Satoshi because they don't have to do anything in that. And yeah. Now, if you get logged out then you lose your funds and so there's, there's always trade-offs, but yeah. there is something about having that ease of that on-ramp of being able to use it right away. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That, that I, I think first impressions are really important. So, you know, to have that first impression, like oftentimes the reaction is I could do that. I could do this. That's, that's, that's easier than I thought it was going to be. Like there's, I think people are intimidated by Bitcoin sometimes, right? Yeah. They, they think they have to be an expert in technology or in I, I don't know They you don't, right. It's for, it's for anyone. Um, and it's funny, you know, <laughs> maybe this is an awkward topic for, for the podcast, but, <laughs> but I think, I think you and I, Mike, we have something in common in that we're these, we're both huge proponents of Bitcoin, uh, but maybe contrary to what people would think about people are huge proponents of Bitcoin. Um, we're not great with technology. Like, uh, uh, I'm usually behind the curve with adopted new technology. Um, it took, took me a while to get my first cell phone, uh, you know, things like that. And, and now, um, but the, the point is that Bitcoin's pretty easy yeah. to use. Well, when I give people my earthlink, uh, email, they know right <laughs> away that like, okay, if this guy can use it, anybody can use it. Yeah. 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 It's much easier than people from the outside think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's look at the uh, island project here. I think we have some some pictures from that. I think they're at the beginning, Andy. Um, I'm super excited about the island project just because I love islands. And <laughs> I think there's just something romantic about like being on a place that's this small, um, isolated community that is surrounded by water and yeah. that they're using Bitcoin. And so... Um, yeah, I think that's the right there. We were doing uh, so these were people that had gone through the 
diploma program. And on that day, we were validating them, correctly? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so so this island, maybe to give some context to the island, the uh, uh, it's in Usulatan, which is the eastern part of the country. It's close to Punto Mango, which is where Bitcoin Beach has a, has like a an outpost. I don't, yeah. I don't know. How yeah, to it was it, actually but. where we initially started the project. Then because of COVID and everything, we yeah. we moved our focus to El Zante, but we just opened uh we were calling it the Castle of Hope or the Citadel of Hope, yep. um, kind of after Hope House yeah. down there. Yeah, and yeah. so we're, we're trying to replicate what's happened in El Zante. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's probably by boat, maybe an hour from there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but a very nice boat ride, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the beach football or beach soccer for Americans uh, is is very popular on this island and the team from this island, not not a not a lot of people on the island i think there's about 2000 people total so there's not a ton of people but that said somehow i think just because of the the intense popularity of the sport on the island there well there's probably not much else to do yeah. so uh. <laughs> the team there are the national champions uh for for beach football for el salvador and they even went a few months ago they uh had an international competition like the beach football world cup i, I don't know what the competition yeah i think they was. went they were they took them to italy yeah to it was in italy yeah and i think they came in second place in the world oh really like i didn't know that team in the world okay. yeah yeah so they're which is amazing that it's like just this island yeah. right and they have have this team that is just world renowned at it so uh we are teaching the Bitcoin diploma or we we've taught the Bitcoin diploma to the to the football team first to to many people on the football team first because they're natural community leaders right like people look up to them yeah. they get to it's travel cool to if Italy you're to yeah if, you, football, if you're the, the football star <laughs> then uh and you're using Bitcoin that that makes other people interested in using Bitcoin yeah yeah for sure but but yeah I'm I'm really excited about the project too just because I mean, the location is great because I think it's it's this um, it's where Meet Premier Bitcoin and Bitcoin Beach have this natural overlap. And the natural overlap is you guys have 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 your own stuff going on in Punta Mango, which is relatively close. Um, and we made he's he's in one of these these pictures here. I'll, I'll point him out uh, when. This guy here, Alejandro, he's uh, he's one of our teachers and he is based in San Miguel, which is in the eastern part of the country. But he made the connection with the governor of Usulatan, which is where the, the island is located in that department. Um, and the governor has been super helpful in in uh, pushing forward Bitcoin education within within his department, within other municipalities there. Um, so we have this like Usulatan is is a place that we've gotten a lot of traction and then you guys have have uh you know the all the stuff in Punta Mango which is in Usulatan so you know the island seems like a great place where we could where we could come together um and also we have different strengths right like we 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 we're just teaching education you guys are are the experts at uh at so many other things. <laughs> well, I mean, that's when I first heard about you guys, I was super excited because it, it felt a little overwhelming when once the law passed, everybody's like, oh, you guys have to do this and you have to do this and you have to educate people all over the country. And I'm like, we're the small team of, you know, a dozen <laughs> volunteers, yeah. you know, just trying to keep our head above water with all the influx of press. And you know, we felt this obligation of, okay, okay, we started this so now we have this responsibility so to see you guys step up that was like okay great this this can happen in a very decentralized way there can be new premier bitcoin hopefully there's 10 others like them that yeah. are operating in different parts of the country and so we can not feel like we have to solely focus on education we can you know do our education components in the places where we are, but know that there's other people operating and so right. for us it was hugely freeing to feel like okay we're not in this alone. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really big puzzle, and there's a lot of pieces to it. Um, 
so yeah, we're we're happy to uh, to be one of those small pieces to to help make the picture a little bit clearer. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited about the about the island. You know, we just started. It was pretty late. I think it was was it as late as November? I think so because it yeah. was it was pretty close to Christmas. Yeah, I mean, we did the diploma different. It was definitely like, after the Bitcoin conference. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, that was the graduation was in December, but I think we only started teaching in November. So we doubled up. We did two classes at a time just because of the logistics of taking a boat to the island and, and all that. So so in a day we would. So so we did it in five weeks instead of 10. Um, but yeah, so that that's that's still very new, but there's so much potential there just because it's. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful island with with very little tourism right now. So that's very little tourism. I think what what the governor's interest is, is, you know, how do we develop these beautiful lands that are that are pretty impoverished because there's not a lot of job opportunities. But, you know, who wouldn't want to, to spend a week on this beautiful secluded island if they can get the word out? And so I think that's part of the reason they're embracing Bitcoin so much is. Hey, these crazy Bitcoiners seem like they'll <laughs> they'll come places where they can spend Bitcoin. So, um, yeah. if we you know if we start a circular economy here on this island, maybe we'll get them to you know yeah. spend time here. And yeah. and I think they've seen the influx in the El Zante and how tourism has just kind of overflowed here. And so, if some of these other areas in the country can start benefiting in the same way. Yeah, and, and we definitely want to do that. You know, in, in December, we had that graduation and we brought a few people um, to a few international Bitcoiners with us. But I think it'd be great this upcoming year to do something similar, but on a bigger scale, right? Bring uh, with a lot more advance notice, um, bring a lot more people and maybe work with the community to figure out ways that people could stay there. Maybe not everyone, but but people that want to spend a week there yeah. or, or the weekend. Maybe go water skiing or jet skiing yeah. or do some other activities there also. Yeah. yeah. But it'd be cool to have like a little maybe at the next graduation at the at the have um have like a festival kind of. I don't know if festival is the right word, but yeah, we've done festivals here and they're they're very successful and yeah. brings the community job you know they have opportunities to come out and sell their yeah. food or their handiworks or whatever for bitcoin right. and and it's a good way to bring the community together yeah. for sure so like the graduation of the bitcoin diploma is just one of the things that happens if it's a weekend i, I don't know what you know all these details to be worked out um but yeah and then and then put it on the map right and then people well because it is it is a beautiful place, so I'm sure that people will come back to it after after they visit it that first time. Um, and and you know that work together. The the more people go there and spend Bitcoin, the more people want to accept Bitcoin and see it as a real medium of exchange. So you know, I mean, that's especially in a place idea. like that where there's no banks to access the system at all i mean it requires getting on a boat right to go to find an atm i mean and so bitcoin makes more sense there than than almost anywhere yeah yeah and and i think that's that's where bitcoin will will really thrive is where bitcoin needs to be not where we want it to be but where yeah. bitcoin needs to be and that that is a place that they have needs that bitcoin is able they have problems that bitcoin can solve so so I know earlier we were talking a little bit about um, you know what you guys have done in this this past year. I don't know if you want to recap that real quickly here, but then what your guys' vision is for 2023, where you see the biggest opportunities, how people can help and participate in that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we 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 started in 2021, uh, in mostly just around San Salvador. And we had 400 students, which at the time we were very happy about. We were like, we taught 400 people. That's like, we, we pat ourselves on the back, right? Like we had a good year. Uh, and then last year, 2022, we taught over 10,000 people. So uh, 25X growth uh, year over year, which, you know, obviously we were ecstatic about. You know, if I could go back in time a year, I don't know if I would have believed it if someone told me all the things that we were able to do in 2022. 
um, which is which is amazing. They're just just uh, it's a really really great place and great time to be alive. I think, but um, I think that's why it's nice to reflect sometimes because. A lot of times when you're in the minutia yeah. of it, it feels like, oh, this is going so slow. Why right. aren't we able to move quicker? But then you pull back and you're like, wow, in a year, yeah. we accomplished all these things with this limited staff and this limited yeah. budget. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we taught we taught over 10,000 students uh, in 12 of the 14 departments that El Salvador has. So we expanded quite a bit. You know, we have, um, we've, quite a lot of students in the eastern part of the country now actually we probably have more there than than in San Salvador than in this than the central part of the country um the bitcoin diploma has been been really amazing uh the meetups um bitcoin island i mean another another accomplishment from 2022 is i don't know if accomplishment is the right word but but all the community support that we've gotten has has just been really helpful and encouraging. So we open sourced the Bitcoin diploma in September, I think. So the way that the way that the diploma worked was we were on a a very tight timeline for the first one. So we kind of um, we had to move quickly for its development. So we knew that we would improve it. We knew that we would get feedback from the students and that we would. Uh, have a better version for the for the second group, which we did, and then a better version for the third group. So this is the third one. The third one is the first one that we open sourced. The first two, I think, were more they they were great. Um, the, you know, the team did a an amazing job creating them. But you know, there there's improvements every time. So so we were like, you know what, this is good enough that that we could share it. Like we we feel comfortable with this now. Uh, so we open sourced it in September and and there's just been so much community support around that. People that have translated it into their own languages in different parts of the world. People that have, you know, the, the whole PDF is available uh, on our on our GitHub now. So people have printed it out and, you know, bound it themselves and and taught it i think bitcoin jungle maybe is is using it there they're one of okay, the people awesome. that they and and i only know about this because they printed it out and they bound it and you know it's black and white so it looks different from what we have um and they took a picture of it and like just tagged us on twitter like hey about to go start you know the first class or something it's like okay cool I, I love how I didn't know about this until just now that, that this is, this has real life. And that's how a decentralized movement works. I mean, that's why it can spread so fast and, and can have such a dramatic impact with, with a low budget and without yeah. a bunch of overhead. Yeah. 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 Which is a good segue into 2023. Um, so for, so we're based around what we've done so far is mostly based around in-person interactive classes. And that is, we will do more this year. We will do a lot more this year. We will have way more students this year than we had last year doing in all the, in all those classes. Uh, we'll have in the first group, which will start in February of the Bitcoin diploma, we will teach more students the Bitcoin diploma in that first group than have learned it in history until this point. Then the first three groups combined, we're going to teach more in this first group. And the same for the second group this year, the same for the third. So we're going to continue to grow there. Uh, but the, you know, how much can we scale that way? It's still, again, I think time is important. Like how quickly we could get this done is important. We don't have forever. So I think the most obvious way or maybe the traditional way would be to digitize it, right? To use a software format where, um, you know, we just we make a digital version of this and we teach it online. And that is something that we're looking into. And and I, I think we're, we'll definitely have more online offerings in this coming year because that does scale better. Right. You, you could reach a lot more people, spend less money to reach those people. I don't I think there's some trade offs with yeah. uh, with the connection that you can make with the students. So at the graduations. At most of our graduations there's at least one of the graduates, one of the students that cries 
because they 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 just feel happy and overwhelmed that they could accomplish this and and there's people that come from other countries to to see them graduate like oh i i didn't think that that would ever happen like it's it's a big moment for them and and that's really amazing to see and to see that connection it's like okay this person like definitely check that box like whether it had an impact on them or not uh with with online you know huge you could reach a lot of people but maybe it's harder to have that deep impact but anyway that's that's um it's a long rant to say that i think there's i think that there is a another way to scale um and i and i love i love that that this conversation is happening here with bitcoin beach and with you mike uh because because i i i see some similarities with with how bitcoin beach approached it so how we are thinking of approaching it is the way that we scale is to empower others to copy what we've done and to facilitate that right so so i think the first step on that without maybe without us even realizing it in september was to open source the diploma um and then to see to see that people wanted wanted this around the world like it's been translated into korean and people are teaching it in korea now like it's and we had nothing to do with that like people just they were like this is a tool that i could use that thanks for this tool i'm i'm going to use it now and and i i'd like to spend a good part of my time this year developing those toolkits right so not so we're working right now on uh version 4.0 which will again be open sourced and also version 1.0 in english it's been translated into english but there's a lot of a lot of graphics that you know qrs that go to videos and all that and it's all spanish so the text is english now but it's not really yeah it's just a translation but we're creating a brand new one um in english and a brand new one in in spanish version 4 of spanish and we want to facilitate the translation of that into other languages our thought is that you know we're 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 a small group too we're just a with volunteers like a couple of dozen people um so we don't have the capacity to do everything but we could do those two the the english and the spanish and then facilitate that people could translate it into their own language and we'd have it up on that platform so it could be like a clearing house for people to come come find it to come find other people that want to work on it right maybe have some sort of message board where people could be like you know what i want to i want to translate this into turkish like any other turkish speakers that want to help and they could work together but more than just translations it could be we have you know we'll we'll put our our intro class on there and if we have advanced classes and the diploma like everything that we have to to put on this clearing house of educational materials but also on this on this um message board maybe somebody's like you know what what i want to do is i want to uh i want to teach bitcoin to whatever subset like i want to teach bitcoin to senior citizens in portuguese i don't know um who can help me with this and and then you know maybe we help facilitate those connections just by having this this space where people could come together um and and another way we could do that is just to make everything open source so this is how we host the meetups this is how we run our finances as as like a bitcoin first project in a world in which you know we still have to live within some parameters of the legacy world uh so just just to open source everything we do and scale by empowering others to to learn from our successes and also our mistakes right i think it's important that we can be transparent about mistakes that we make going forward right it's a lot less fun to put your mistakes out there but i think more important yeah 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 and, and i think i think uh i brought up bitcoin beach because i i think you know bitcoin beach did something similar right bitcoin beach was the first circular economy project 
And because of that, we've mentioned a few, like you're wearing a Bitcoin Akasi shirt now. Uh, we mentioned Bitcoin Jungle, there's Bitcoin Lake, there's there's uh, Bitcoin Pariah, there's there's a, a number of, of Bitcoin circular economy projects out there that were inspired by Bitcoin Beach. And I know I know Bitcoin Beach helps um, helps lend advice and wisdom, you know, like uh, I don't know exactly what goes on in those conversations, but but I'm sure like this didn't work for us. This did work for us, you know, just just all those sorts of things. Uh, and that's that's really uh, I'm sure that has been really important to help get these other projects off the ground like that. That that first one is in the books now. So the second one, the third one, the fourth one is easier. And Bitcoin Beach has scaled by allowing, I think, you know, I don't I don't mean to, to, to talk on behalf of Bitcoin Beach, but but they've scaled in a certain way. They've scaled by allowing others to to replicate what they've done here in other places. And that's what we want to do. We want me Premier Bitcoin to replicate by allowing others to build in their own community. So the core idea of me Premier Bitcoin is that it is grassroots, community-led, independent, impartial Bitcoin education. And we want that to exist everywhere. We don't want to do it everywhere. One, because we can't, <laughs> right? It's not even an option. Yeah. Uh, but we, the whole, the whole idea of this is, is to empower people. So it, it just fits really well into that larger mission to, to empower rather than to tell people. And, and the context is different. Like the context will be different in, in different places. Even, even here in El Salvador, um, one of the things that we're thinking about for, for this upcoming year is, so we have a house here in San Salvador that, that, that we rent and we use it as an office and also as a, as a school, we have classes there. Uh, it's kind of been, it's kind of an all purpose, um, place for us. And we're thinking about having one in the Eastern part of the country as well. And that would be interesting because it might evolve a little bit differently. Like what they do with that space might be a little bit different from what we do. Cause the context is different from San Salvador to San Miguel. Like it's, it's, even though it's within the same country and the country is not that big, there's still differences and maybe what the approach should be a little bit different there, you know? So then the approach in Uruguay is going to be different yeah. than the approach here. And, and the best people to decide that approach are the ones that live there that, that, that build there. So that's, you know, along the same, along the same, uh, the same end. So in Itaco, uh, which is one of the places where we have the Bitcoin diploma, some of the star students last year, it was their final year. So it's high school, high school age. So it was their final year. They graduated the Bitcoin diploma. Um, the ones in question, they were in the first group. So they, graduated in September and then they graduated high school. They graduated like from everything in November. So next month in February, two of those students will go back to a taco as teachers for the Bitcoin diploma. So we're, we're, we're training them now. And that's the same with the Island. We want to work. One of the things that we want to do is now that we've had that first group go through, we want to identify like, okay, these, these two or three people, they really get it. Let's uh, let's work with them, and then they teach the community, right? We we get things started, but then we leave it to. I, I mean, one, it it saves on cost, right? Yeah. We don't have to take we don't have to take boat rides to go out there to teach every class, but but also they also know everybody. They know yeah what you know is what is going to be the most efficient way to teach somebody who right. can't read and write. Right. You know, those sorts of things. They know who can read and write, who can't. Yeah. Um, you know, who's going to be more timid about things and, and they can kind of customize it for each person. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So so I think and I would love if if when did Bitcoin Beach start in 20 in 2019? 2019. Yeah. 2019. Kind of mid mid 2019. Yeah. So I think it would be great if, you know, El Salvador has been put on the map um, by by a variety of things, but one of them being being Bitcoin Beach, and 
and now that's that's inspired similar projects in other places. The dream for me from Red Bitcoin is that we are able to inspire and again facilitate, like make it easier for people to get started on grassroots Bitcoin education projects everywhere. Uh, and, and I think that would be so cool for for El Salvador, like to really, I mean, El Salvador is the bleeding edge of of the next revolution, right? And and, and that just drives it home. If like, okay, so the circular economy thing, okay, so that there's that exists in a whole bunch of places, but first one was in El Salvador. This this um, not not to say that Bitcoin education doesn't exist, but this specific sort yeah. of you know with a focus on independence and partiality. Uh, grassroots, community-based, um, interactive, like like this sort of brand of, of Bitcoin education that hopefully it seems like there's a ton of interest. We get people write us every day from all over the world like, hey, I want to do this where I live. So like it's, it's this isn't, we're almost uh, listening to the universe, right? We're, we're listening to the community like, okay, there's a, there's a need for this. Let's lean into it. Uh, there's a desire for this. Let's lean into it. Um, so, so that's, that's, uh, if, if El Salvador could be, could birth these two, uh, hopefully very important, very impactful things that, that spread around the world. Like it's like El Salvador is really the place. <laughs> no, and I think, I think the model that you guys have, have chosen is, is really the only one where you can have that exponential growth, because if you try to control it all and try to have it be top down maybe you can 2x but you're yeah. not gonna you know 100x over yeah. the next couple of years so i think that the you know the the form and the way that you guys are going about that is going to have a much bigger impact and that's the reason that we decided to be very open-handed and open source with everything because we realized we can't go to all these different communities and and we shouldn't go we don't yeah. have a natural foothold there we don't have the the trust of the community like Erman in South Africa, he's been working in that community for 10 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just got to spend a couple of weeks with them and just seeing, you know, the trust level they have and the impact that, that injecting Bitcoin in an ongoing activity, how that's leveled up everything for him 10 X, where if we tried to go to another country and start something, we'd be still trying to, you know, get our feet on the ground and get our first person to trust us yeah. where he's up and running and, and is spurring, while we were in South Africa, we met with several other Bitcoiners that are on the verge of starting their own communities there. So mm -hmm. now you see Bitcoin Akasi is birthing more, yeah. you know, follow ons in South Africa. And so, I mean, that's just hugely exciting to see the exponential growth that's that's possible. And and I, I think it's so so it's different. That approach is not the typical approach. And. I want it to be. That's the world that I want to live in. I want to live in a world where, where people are empowered to create change in their own lives rather than people are dictated to. Like that's, that's you know, to take a big step back, um, Bitcoin education is not the goal. Bitcoin education is a tool towards the goal. The real goal is self-sovereignty, decentralization, personal responsibility. These are the real goals. The, that, that's the world that I want to live in. That's the world that we want to create. Bitcoin education is a tool, is the best tool that we have to bring that world forward. Um, but if that is the goal, if the goal is empowerment, then I mean, it's about power, right? It's about power and who wields it. Is it is it the individual and the community or is it, you know, uh, centralized bodies, institutions, whatever. And and we live in a world where where power is centralized. And, and I, I think, you know, a big step back from and maybe I'll just speak personally then. Um, The point of all of this is to is to distribute power differently than how it's distributed now, to change 
the relationship that we as individuals have with power and, and with ourselves, right? That, that we listen to ourselves rather than others, um, that we're capable that, and so with that in mind, it's, it would be counterproductive to try to control, you know, how, how the project evolves in other places. Right. Cause that's, that's, the whole point is is you're capable of making your own decisions so yeah. we, we have to we we have to lead by example and like you're saying lead by example but also allow them the freedom to adapt to what works best for them because the projects have to look whether it's circular economy project or educational project it has to look different in each context because there's going to be different things that work better in each place yeah. so if you hold it to like, well, this is how we did it. So you guys have to do it like yeah. this. It's going to be a failure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah. And, and I think, I think, uh, leading by example is, is just, it's how I wish the world was that just, I mean, it's proof of work, right? Just, um, it doesn't matter what your connections are. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter. Like none of that matters. It's just the work that you put into it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful. I'm really hopeful that, that, that we can create a better world by, by living in it, by living in it today. So I think El Salvador really is the future, right? Like I, I really feel like we're living in the future here. Just, just, how often I use Bitcoin yeah. know, like, and how normal it is, <laughs> how, how normal it is. It's like, this is the world that I want to live in. And, and it's so important that, that when we have these, these projects and these companies that we live the values, right? Like if, if, if we don't do it, we can't expect others no. to, if we don't do it, then it won't happen. Right. So like, you know, projects like Bitcoin Beach and Meet Premier Bitcoin, I think they really have to um, not just look towards the future, but live in the future. No, and I, I, I'm always reminded when I actually go somewhere else and, and can't use Bitcoin, yeah. I'm like, okay, wow, I take for <laughs> granted how far along we are here. And, and people always say, oh, it's a failure because not every store is accepting Bitcoin. It's like, but yeah, you can live on Bitcoin very easily yeah. and very normally. Yeah. Maybe you won't be able to buy from a particular store, but you'll be able to get your groceries. You can pay for pretty much everything yeah. in Bitcoin if you choose to. And and there's no place else in the world where that even comes close. Yeah. And so I, I think people have to remember that when they hear about, oh, it's a failure. Like, uh, no, we're very early in the process, but El Salvador is leagues ahead of anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, it's, it's creating those, uh, those positive examples and precedents here. Yeah. I mean, when I was, I was in New York for, for, for new year's and for Christmas and new year's and I used Bitcoin once I was there two weeks. I used Bitcoin once and it was to split a bill with another Bitcoiner, you know, <laughs> like, which I don't even know if that should count, <laughs> but, uh, but here I use it multiple times a day. Yeah. And it's just a normal thing. No, and it's so easy. In fact, most of the time, it's easier than using cash in those yeah. situations. There's yeah. some, there's some of the the you know things that we keep harping on with some of the challenges with the the, the Chivo iteration at the supermarket and some of the things that they still need to do some work on yeah, things. Yeah, room for improvement for sure. Um, but in general, it's easier to use than than cash, which. I think we forget sometimes how different that is here than, yeah. than the rest of the world. Yeah, and it, and it's going to come. I, uh, one of the problems that I see here with spending Bitcoin is <laughs> education, um, but is is merchants. So like a you know someone that that works in a store that accepts Bitcoin, but if not a lot of people pay for it, then they don't have that. It's not it's worth not it to them nature. to keep up yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they have a POS somewhere else and they. The battery's dead, maybe. Yeah. The battery's dead. Yeah. And, and, but, 
but we need that's why we need people to spend bitcoin yeah right like i know i know uh i think some people look back on that first bitcoin purchase of 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 pizza with ten thousand bitcoin as 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 like oh what a what a fool but like we wouldn't be here without that no like this this doesn't exist like we have to use it we have to live it which is what i was saying like we can't yeah. we can't just think of the theory we have to we have to live the theory right if you think this is this is the future you want to live in make it the present that you do live in spend and replenish yeah. i mean it's it's not that hard yeah. and the more bitcoiners that do it the more it catches on, the more people want to accept Bitcoin and understand the value of using Bitcoin instead of credit cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. exactly. We've uh, we've gone on for quite a while here. Um, I want to make sure, I don't know if there's any companies that have been extra supportive of you guys that you want to shout out. I know Bitfinex was has played a big role. I don't know if there's any other companies you want to give a shout out to or or any plea to potential companies and donors. I know um, doing the type of work that, that you're doing, funds are always a limiting factor. And so for people to know how they can support uh, yeah. New Premier Bitcoin. Yeah, 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 great. Um, yeah, Bitfinex, they, they, they're, uh, they're a big sponsor of ours and we've had um, a, a lot of really wonderful sponsors, a lot of companies here in, in El Salvador that have been super helpful because, you know, all this, all this takes money, right? So um, an, another, a good chunk of our funding also comes from the community. So just individual donations and People Which can, is probably especially important right now because most Bitcoin companies have had their budgets well, yeah, this just is, hacked this away. Is a, and this is a tough time. A, a lot of a lot of conversations that that we have with potential sponsors is like, let's circle back to this in a couple of months. So this just isn't isn't a great time. Well, it's hard when they're laying staff off to then right, to, yeah. say like, okay, yeah, we'll give to this project yeah. at the same time. I saw, I saw like a couple of months ago there, I, I, I had a phone call scheduled with someone who I thought might be a sponsor. And then I saw news like, oh, this company laid off, you know, 15% of their staff. And I was like, ooh, I don't think we're going to get anything from them. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, we also rely a lot on, on the community. Uh, so people could donate directly on our website. Uh, right now we have a fundraising campaign on Geyser. In the past we've had it on Tallycoin. Now we're, we're trying out Geyser, uh, just on our web, on our website, which is mepremierbitcoin.io or myfirstbitcoin.io. Uh, you could find the donation page and donate there. Uh, also we sell, well, we should have on the website soon, uh, to sell merch. You know, just T-shirts, mugs, hoodies, stuff like that, um, and you know that that helps fund fund all of our projects. We'll have a little store where people could buy stuff. If if they're in El Salvador, they could come to one of our meetups, which is the last Thursday of the month in San Salvador. We haven't set the regular time for the eastern part of the country yet uh, for this year, um, and just just reach out to us. But yeah, I mean that all the. All the support from the Bitcoin companies and all the support from from um, the community is is the only reason why we've been successful, right? Like this, we are a conduit for that support. Like there's there's so many people that that recognize that this is important and they want to help, but maybe they're not here on the ground and like. Uh, there, there is much responsible for this as, as, as we are the people who are, who are here. Like it's, as I said before, it's a really big puzzle and we all have our, have our small part to, to play. So yeah, I mean, donate donations would always be appreciated. And we and are now, we are now tax exempt in the U S nice. <laughs> no, I would definitely encourage people to give. We've, We've actually, when we've had extra resources here at Bitcoin Beach, we've shuttled them over to, to My First Bitcoin just because we believe so much in, in the work that, that they're doing. So definitely encourage you guys, if, if you're looking for a way to be involved in this, um, send them some sats. It's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin Beach has been super helpful. So shout out to Bitcoin Beach too. No, it's like I said, for us, it's been... 
it, it feels like this huge relief taken off our shoulders. Like, okay, we're not responsible for all the education in El Salvador. There's this, you know, other great organization that that is their really their only focus. And so, um, yeah, it's it's been fun being able to work with you guys. Um, I'm interested. Uh, you handed me a book when we started this that you wrote on immigration. So I'm interested to read that and then maybe we can circle back and do a podcast on that. It's one of the great things about the Bitcoin space is you have people from all these different perspectives. And and I know my political leanings are very different than your political leanings, yet we're on the same page as far as when it comes to Bitcoin. And so um, that's part of the reason I started this podcast was to be able to delve into these issues yeah. and to to see how we can work together and not get caught up in these partisan you Absolutely. know, little bubbles. And and I think something that Bitcoin has taught me is that that other stuff doesn't matter, right? Like we have a different, I don't know, it's not binary, right? It's not like Republican or Democrat or, 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 or whatever. It, it's, I think we have more in common than we realize we live, we live in a world which incentivizes competition rather than cooperation. And I think Bitcoin incentivizes cooperation, right? Like maybe in the old world, if you and I got together, then we wouldn't see eye to eye on some other issue and we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't work together. But now like Bitcoin allows us to or encourages us to see that collaboration is how we win, not competition. And and again, this is, you know, this is a whole different tangent that we could go on, I'm sure. But um, but Bitcoin is a paradigm shift, right? It changes how we view the world. It changes how we interact with the world, like our place in it, our place with each other. And almost always for the better, like there's almost nothing that I see uh, that Bitcoin does worse than the than the legacy world. Almost everything is like, you know, in, in this specific example, which is a big one. This isn't a small thing. This is huge. But uh, to incentivize collaboration over competition is that is a huge step forward for humanity. Right. If, if we could work together rather than 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 you know, always, always find ways to fight with each other. I, I said that I worked as a journalist before this, and it is, you know, I know journalism isn't, isn't always the favorite profession of Bitcoiners, <laughs> but, uh, and I get it, I get it, but it, but it can be like the ideal of journalism is, is similar to the ideal of Bitcoin. It exists to, to, or I believe that, that it's, best purpose is a check on power. Um, and it's strayed from that. It's strayed from that because it's been incentivized to stray from that, right? Because it's this controversy gets more clicks. And that is that is the world like journalism is an example of how the legacy world corrupts things, right? And it's, uh, it, it, it corrupts individuals, it corrupts institutions the incentive structure is broken and the incentive structure of of Bitcoin. I, I I'm really hopeful that it. Could radically change our world, not just change how we make payments, but change everything. And, and, this is, and we see that in, in the project, we see how it shifts people's minds, it shifts their yeah. time preferences, yeah. it shifts the way they they look at being involved in their community and giving back to their community. So I, you know, if you would have told me all those things a few years ago, I even though I was a Bitcoiner and and saw the value of Bitcoin, I would have been like, yeah, that's stretching it. But I've seen it for real. So. Yeah. 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 This is Bitcoin is our best hope to build something better. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, it's been uh, fun getting to chat with you uh, on air here a little bit, John. And like I said, we'll have to circle back in a couple months and uh, delve into some more of the pertinent issues here in El Salvador, immigration being one of those. I'm excited to read your book. Um, and I'll uh, on the next, uh, when we're on, I'll, I'll report to people whether or not I think they should read it or not. So, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks so much, Thanks. Mike. Thanks for having us on.